What's up guys? Welcome back to the Turbo John YouTube channel. Tonight's Thursday. We're supposed to be racing. We're supposed to be racing at Kenston Dragway tonight, but North Carolina storms got us. So we got, uh oh. <laughs> the North Carolina storms got us and we're losing power and we got rained out. So no racing tonight. So what I was going to do tonight though, I wanted to show y'all. I didn't show y'all a lot of my data logs from the race this past weekend, but I was going to show you a couple things on my data log. There's a little bit of stuff I'm trying and it's kind of working. I think I'm still in the, the infancy stage of learning it and figuring out if it's going to work or not. So let me show you what I got going on. We're going to show you the Holly data logs from the race this past weekend where I got that win. That was huge. I still can't believe it. I'm still on cloud nine. It's freaking awesome. I'm super excited. All right, y'all stay tuned and check it out. Oh, 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 hold on. Can't forget my trophy. This thing is like five foot tall. It is huge. Biggest trophy. Yeah, this thing, I'm taking this thing with me everywhere I go, it seems. All right, check it out. So check this stuff out. So this is the data logs. This is my, my table that I'm using. This is my tune-up. This is the actual tune-up that I had in the race. So I'm in the base fuel table now. This is just what my, my fuel stuff is looking like. That table is not the best best in the world up there but i'm still i'm still learning on it still going i've already transferred over to the learn function stuff it was correct it's always always correct it's just a a few percent but usually it's not too bad um this is my target stuff with my air fuel ratio i actually fattened it up a little bit after the first pass i had leaned it up just a tad but uh it wasn't but like a i think it was point point two points i think i have uh 3.8 as the target down here then I started thinking about it. We were, you know, pretty high in elevation. And uh, the car, I, it, I wanted to make sure that it was nice and safe. And generally, higher elevation, it doesn't require as much fuel. But I just wanted to, to make sure. Shady Side was a blast. We had a good time. So let me show you the data logs real fast. I'm going to show you the data logs and show you what um, I was doing, what was new. Well, I guess first, let me show you what, what was new here. You hear people all the time, you know, traction control. This is a traction control ICF. This is if you have Holly uh, HP or Dominator and you've got enough inputs and outputs. I think it's just inputs. I hadn't looked at it, but it's got a dry shaft data speed sensor that you hook up and then you can go in here and then you can build your graphs when you when you do it. Here goes your dry shaft speed and then you got your timing retard. So I guess this is uh, zero retard. I would have to do some research on it and then you can basically build your graph so that you've got the, this is your chart, you know, that's 2000 RPM for dry shaft. I don't know what would be, you know, maximum speed, but you know, the pump, the, the dry shaft data would go like this. And then you take these dots and then you kind of match the, the dry shaft. So uh, I assume that's how it works. Like I said, I've never messed with it. So you're gonna have to watch another video to figure that one out. So I was thinking the other day when I was, um, you know, uh, playing around with the computers before we went to Shadyside, I was playing around with some some of these advanced tables, and I had I had heard of people doing advanced tables, doing a 2D table, and for a traction control, um, uh, there's a couple videos out there where people are doing it, and they are using uh, front wheel speed and rear wheel speed, and the difference between those two it detects wheel speed if the front wheels are on the ground and the back wheels are on the ground. And if suddenly the back wheels, you know, accelerate faster than the front, it can pull timing out. And I know people have done that and it's worked. And so I was just playing around with the advanced tables, uh, sometimes at night, you know, just tinker around with these things, pull up the, the software and start playing with it and start, you know, just, just messing with it. And so I was in these advanced tables here and I was like, well, shoot, I was like, well, I've always got, you know, uh, time and retards. Like I've got, um, this right here is my, my launch pedal shift is what I call it because it can be a, um, you know, it can be a couple, there's a couple strategies you can put in here. But uh, right now I've got it like as a launch retard. It pulls eight degrees out and then it ramps it back in at 1.5 seconds. And then when it shifts into second gear, it's got a little bit of a retard also. It pulls out six degrees and then it ramps it back in in four tenths of a second, half a second. You know, somewhere in there just trying to eliminate that shock where it doesn't blow the tire off when it overloads. Something else you can do in here is you can you can make this thing so that it um it is it's going to reactivate uh when you let off the pedal um and so right now i've just got it it's at launch enabled 
and it's basically just when the time. And so what you can do is if you advance this right here, um, you can do uh, advanced enable when the TPS is above, you know, a certain percentage. And so you can make it so that if you pedal the car down track, it basically starts this over. And I've done that in the past. And um, what I was trying to do is, you know, make it so that if you just whack the gas real hard, if you let off real fast and get back on it real fast, it uh, starts the timing retard again. But I, it worked, but I had some problems with it. And what it was doing is it was just making it, you know, too, too lazy. So now what I do in order to, to cushion that shock is in the boost control, I use TPS modulation. Uh, a lot of people, when I'm running like on a flypaper radial track, um, with radials on the car, I don't have this enable, uh, enabled, and basically it's at the max dome pressure at all times. But with this enabled, if I crack the throttle down track, it drops boost. And even if I crack it and swat it real fast, it dumps the CO2 pressure. And then when I go back to the floor, it takes it a second for the boost to come back. When this is not enabled, if it's at 40 pounds of dome pressure and I whack the throttle, boost comes back violently. So that's just the way I'm controlling that now. But anyway, that's kind of sidetracked. Let me get back to what I was, I was trying to do. So look at this table right here. So I, I've labeled this traction control. And this is probably the most redneck basic form of traction control there is and it's basically a time and offset table but the axes i'm using i'm using two axes i'm using time and rpm so you can see time is over here and on the left and then rpm is over here on the bottom and so this is engine rpm so what i did is when i was after my passes at uh, galat on thursday night i had two solid passes the car went down the track and it went down the track pretty fast and pretty clean and so what i did is i simply went out here and i started plugging some numbers in and so i, I put my imaginary line here because for some reason i don't know why typically you can do you can show the data log and it'll show you right where it's at but for some reason on this table i cannot get it to do it I'm going to have to get somebody that is better than me. It's probably because I'm still using the version 4 uh, of the Holly is probably what they're going to tell me. But I've got version 5 on Randy's, so it makes it easy to separate our data logs, version 4 and version 5. So that's the reason I have not updated mine. But um, anyway, so I've just went through here, and basically I let go to trains break back here at 4,000 RPM, and then this is the time axis. So at X amount of time, you got RPM climbing up. And so as RPM is climbing up, it gets over here. And so what happens is at some point, so like my car typically blows tires off at 0.8 seconds. So at 0.8 seconds in the run, I can be at 6,000 RPM. But anything over that, you can see what it does. It starts pulling out timing. And what happens on these old data logs, on the data logs when I had the, the Hoosiers on the car, it would it would initially hook and then it would get out there and start spinning and then I would lose the RPM. The RPM would go way high and then the you know in, in the time. But this pulling this timing out is exactly what traction control does. And so traction control it bases it on on drive shaft speed. And I'm basing it on RPM since I don't have a drive shaft sensor on the car right now. I'm probably going to get a drive shaft sensor, but basically I'm going to do this same exact thing but based on, on drive shaft speed, once I get some drive shaft data. And that's the key thing is you gotta have some data. Let me show you real quick. I'm gonna show you um, the, the data log. So this is my first data log pass. Now something else, let me show you something else that's important. This weekend I didn't think about it, but these numbers right here, I had that minus six degrees here and uh, minus 15 here or minus 14. And so I thought that it was just gonna go to 1.5 seconds and then this was gonna stop, but this is not how these tables work. I, I didn't think that through properly. So basically any time while I was in first gear, over a second and a half, this was the this was the line that was important. So if I got above 7,100 RPMs, it started pulling out timing. And if I made it to 8,200, then it would you know snatch out a bunch. So let me show you this data log. This is my first pass. You can see I've got traction control right here. I've got it now on my edit views where I edited it, so you can actually see what's happening. It's pulling timing out here, and you can see it right here. This right here is in in the run this is in the run where the, it was accelerating faster than what that graph allowed and it really it tugs the motor down you can you can tell it you can see it but right here so i let go of trans brake this was at uh 0.4 seconds 0.5 seconds in the run 0.6 seconds 0.539 
And you can see um, I'm still in my, my time in retard here for my uh, for my uh, for my launch retard. So it's still there. But watch that. Watch that traction control right there as I start moving. It pulls some timing out and that's going to slow the motor down a little bit. And then it got back above to where it wasn't in anything there. and You're good to go. And then up here at the top of first gear, remember what I just told you a minute ago about the uh, the way it was uh, up in the RPM. So we were at 2.8 seconds in the run, and it was at 7,100, and it started pulling timing because that's what it thought it needed to do. And then, of course, I shifted it. I got my shift retard in there as well, but then it comes up. Now it's in second gear. So second gear, it knows it's in second gear, and I've only got you know pulling timing out in first gear um, the way I had it initially. So boom, there you go. I mean, it didn't pull anything out. Got out there, and made you know 36 pounds of boost, and run a, a halfway decent time. I mean, it wasn't superbly fast, but it run it run halfway through down there. It wasn't bad at all. And you can see, I finally got some RPM climb. That 390 gear really made a difference in high gear. That high gear was struggling. You know, it would go about 7,000 RPM and just ride the converter there. So now it's actually going up. Let me show you another data log. This is another one from this past weekend uh, when we were at uh, Shady Side at the No Prep race. You know, it leaves pretty decent, five pounds of boost and comes up. Then look at all the, this one right here now, something that I failed to do. Look at all the, the, the traction control, um, as I'm calling it. It's pulling timing all through here. Like, it's really pulling timing. And the reason it was doing that is if you look from this run to the last run, I've got more dome pressure and that ramp is shorter. Now that ramp, I think I shortened it up a second and a half. And so anytime you try to do that, what's going to happen? If you try to make more power early, it's going to try to accelerate the engine RPM more. So it's going to come up and it's going to fly up. <clears throat> but this traction control was not allowing it to do it. This timing retard was was stalling it. But then check it out up here. This flat line, this is the first time I've had this flat line. But the reason it got the flat line is look what happened. It got to 7,100, where at 1 1.5 seconds into the run, but watch this traction control down here on the bottom left. Watch out how much time and it starts pulling out because it's trying to it's trying to flatline the motor and it does. It flatlines it. it. It pulled out three degrees of timing. It had 24 degrees of timing right there. So that's killing power. But then look at it on up here. It was trying to climb in RPM, but it was real sluggish. And that's why I shifted it. 7,600, it's pulling out 10 degrees of timing. And then boom, I shifted it in a second gear. And then it made it on through. Then it was, uh, you know, climbing, went out the back door back there. And so uh, made a little bit more boost. You can see it made 30, 38 pounds of boost. I made a little bit more pounds of boost, but not, not a ton. But so this is my redneck version of traction control. And I think it's got some potential. Um, let me show you another data log. This is a data log from the Hoosiers, and I'll show you exactly what I was talking about. This is a data log where I lost control of the tire. And so it starts, you know, it takes off, same thing. Launch pit, the reason that's blank right there is because at this time I was not using this this function of a, a traction control, but we can show, I can show you what it did. And see, it comes up here. It's good. This is within the bounds. I'm at one second into the run, and it's at 6,300 RPM. So let's go back over here real fast and take a look at my one second, 6,300 RPM. So one second here. And go across 6,300. I got zero degrees retarded right there. So we would have been on this side right here of the line early there. And so then let's go ahead and go back to the data log real fast. So we can open up the data log. Now let's go up here. We were at one second. Okay, we're good there. Let's go to 1.10. 1. Uh, so uh, one second. We hadn't got to the 60 foot yet. And you can see this this RPM is that's where it kicks the tires. It's just a gradual spin. It doesn't go straight up. It's a hook and spin. And you can feel this in the car with the tires. It's a gradual increase in RPM until it finally blows the tires away because it's not it wasn't doing anything. So let's go uh, 1.1 seconds at 6600 and see what we would have had. So 1.1 seconds, 6600 RPM right there. We'd have been pulling two degrees of timing out. Okay, so you go, oh, okay, well, two degrees is not a lot. Let's see let's see what the next increment is in a tenth of a second. So let's go at 1.2 seconds. 1.2 seconds. Now we're at 7,400 RPMs. In one tenth of a second, it went from 6,600 to 7,400 RPMs. This is where it's getting out of control. So now 1.2 seconds, 7,400. Let's see what that would have looked like. 1.2, 7,400. 
it would have pulled out eight degrees of timing there at minus 8.6 degrees of timing. That's going to slow the RPM down. That's going to make the car, it's going to slow the wheel speed down, and it should. Eight degrees is a lot. That is a lot of power when you pull eight degrees out. That might be too much. I mean, you know, a lot of traction controls, they go in like two, four, six degree increments. I'm at eight degrees there. So let's go, let's go to the next one. So now we're at 1.2. Let's go to 1.3. 1.3 seconds is at 8,400 RPM. And now you see, I just lifted right there. I just lifted right before that. So, I mean, you know, that's when I noticed in the car, you know, you're always delayed with your foot pedal. So we said 8,400 at 1.3. So 1.3 seconds, 8,400. It would have been pulling out 14 degrees of timing. It would have never run away like that. It shouldn't have. What, what probably would have happened, and I don't have it this verified 100% yet, but this is what happens in most traction control vehicles. It starts, it gets on this curve right here. Now, if this was on a radial, it's too late. You're going to blow the tires away. It's going to, it's going to, uh, sometimes traction control, from what they say, can save a radial some, but not as much. But on a slick, that's where we have the advantage because this thing has got wheel speed as it's going through here. It is a, a hook and spin as it goes. But when it got to right here on this curve, it would have been pulling out a bunch of timing. And what it should have done is arrested that RPM. The RPM would have come up, and then it should have nosedived over here, and then started gra gradually coming back up. And that's what I think would have happened, and I think that's exactly what this is going to do. Um, we'll see as I get more passes on it. And you see, like I said, right, right now I took this top one at 1.5 seconds, and I just cleared it out at zero. And then that way... Anything above a second and a half, because I want the thing to shift at like 76, 7700 RPM, but that needs to happen after a second and a half. If you go to second gear, you can see second gear, I got the time starting at 1.5, and something I've got to research, I don't know for sure. I don't know if this 1.5 is starting when it is when it goes into second gear or if that's the time from when I re let go of the trans brake. I think that's what it is, and that's why I set it up here. So basically, I got it from 1.5 to you know 5.5. And so somewhere up in here, I'm going to hit second gear, and it's going to hopefully follow this curve right here. And, you know, it'll go through the finish line at, you know, that low five seconds, you know, mid five seconds, depending on what it's at, at about 7,800 RPM is what I've been doing recently. Now, if you're out here at, you know, and this has happened, if you're out here in high gear just past the 330, which is somewhere down in here, you know, 3.3 to 3.6 seconds, and then suddenly your RPM jumps from 7,300 to 8,000, it's going to do the same thing. And this, this numbers might end up having to be more. I've got it more aggressive in first gear. Just because first gear, it's got some mechanical advantage because of the gear ratio. So it can really, you know, run away on you. But this this graph, I think, is going to be close to, but I don't know. Uh, it's just something I'm trying. But anyway, this is something I wanted to share with you guys. This is something that, um, you know, a lot of people have. If you got Davis traction control, that's obviously far superior to this. If you got the Holly version of the traction control, the $500 version, it's going to be a little bit more secure, uh, superior to this, most likely. Um, or, you know, it may be just as simple as I need to just get a drive shaft data. If I get a drive shaft sensor on it and change this to drive shaft sensor, now we know what the drive shaft is doing and it can pull it based on that run. Now, here's the thing with traction control, though, is when you have a run, say you have a run and it goes five O's, the best pass you've got is five O's, and that's what your drive shaft sensor is. It don't matter how much power you throw at it, when your drive shaft sensor or your RPMs, when it is trying to go faster than five O's, the computer is going to be going, whoa, put on the brakes, buddy. Nope, nope, nope. Let's retard some time and let's pull some timing out of this thing so that you don't, it thinks you're spinning. So, and that's what you programmed it to do. So that's the thing you got to be careful of. And that's what I messed up on that pass I showed y'all earlier on that last pass when I increased the ramp. I did not think about taking these numbers and moving everything over like, you know, to what I could probably done is uh, highlighted these cells 
and just offset it and just moved everything two degrees. And then it would have been, you know, it would have basically essentially just moved that that's that line over to make it work. All right, guys, sorry for the long video. Make sure y'all comment, like, and subscribe. Go to turbojohnracing.com, pick you up some swag, get you some t-shirts. These new t-shirts are awesome. I'm wearing one today. That's the front logo. The back one's awesome. Go fast, get some wind lights. We're going to try again next week. Next Thursday, Kentston 252 race. We're going to be trying to go up the list. Currently, we're number eight. All right, guys, later.